Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel. Today, I'm at the Missouri Star Quilt Company headquarters with Jenny Doan of the Missouri Star Quilt Company and we're gonna be working on this Twist 10 table runner. So the first thing you're gonna need for this project is my template. This is the Twist 10 block and it's, you can download the PDF for free. It's in, the link is in the description box below for you to download it and we're gonna need six of these because we're gonna be making six blocks. And so with paper piecing, you need a printed template for each one of the blocks you'll be making, right? Since you're going to be using up the paper. Yes. And I love that you printed it on newsprint. I do, on newsprint. And the reason I do that is because it's a little bit more lightweight than the regular printer paper and it'll just peel right off after we stitch on it. You know, I did do something with paper piecing once and I found that um, grandchildren are very good to rip off all that paper or little children. You know, yeah. you like sit them, rip, tear this up. They love it. <laughs> That'll work too. <laughs> so let's get started. So for the first thing, we are going to be using uh, the 10 inch square packs here. Okay. All right. So Jenny, you've picked out two fabrics and the I two have. fabrics, basically we're going to be going with uh, two coordinating or contrasting fabrics, one for the center piece of the block and then four individual corners. And so I've designed the block in a size that one of the 10 inch squares can be cut into four and there'll be just enough for the four corners. Perfect. So which one of those do you think you want to use for the center? I think the flowers for the center. Great. So then for that, I'm going to need you to cut out a center square that's six and a half by six and a half. All and right. that's what we'll use for the center one. All right, I can do that. Real simple. There you go. Six and a half. Mm -hmm. And it's roughly, it, the, everything here, the cutting part doesn't have to be perfect because we will be trimming it down. So I've made the measurements or I've come up with the measurements already so that they can be trimmed down at the end. So if you're not that good, you know, with the ruler and the rotary cutter, just cut it at least that hey, size. Hey, hey, I'm all right with the ruler and the <laughs> You are, I know. <laughs> But some people may if feel... If you're not that good. <laughs> well, some people don't feel that comfortable. It's true. It's true. You're right. Okay, so that's your center one. Then let's grab the other 10-inch okay. square. And then I need you to cut that one down the middle at 6 inches. And that way you're going to end up with a 6-inch chunk and a 4-inch chunk. Okay, what do you mean at 6 inches? Because this is 10, so yeah. if I cut it in the middle, it's going to be 5. Yeah, so 1 inch over. So oh, okay. 6 inches. So 6 inches over. So that we split, basically, the square, you're splitting it into 6 inches and 4 inches. So not exactly right. the middle. Great. There we go. And then each one of those, let's cut them in half. All right, straight in half? Yep, straight in half. So at 5 inches, right? Mm -hmm. So now we end up with two pieces that measure 5 by 4 and the other ones measure 5 by 6. And All those right. are the ones that we're going to need for the four corners of the twist 10 block. Perfect. All right, there we go. So let's get started. Here's your template. Okay. Let's trim off some of the excess of the paper just so that it's a little bit easier to work with. Of this right here? Yes. So I can just like... Just like that. There's an outer line, right? There's a black line that outlines the block, and then there's a lighter black line, and that's your seam allowance. Okay. So you definitely want to keep that in there. Just don't cut too close to it. All right. So for the center, grab your center piece. Okay. And for paper piecing, here's the step that we're going to do. We're going to flip. This is, this is the part where I get confused, right here. All right. Here we go. So wrong side of the paper is up. Let's do the same thing okay. with the fabric. Wrong, wrong side, side of the fabric. So we have wrong side, wrong side. I like to use the lapel stick here. I it's love it. a fabric glue stick pretty much and it's going to help us keep the first piece in place since we're not going to be using pins. So let's just dab a little bit here. Perfect. And then stick that on here. So on that the it's wrong over side. Yes, on the wrong side. Wrong side to wrong you side. You got it. Okay. Wrong side to wrong side. All right, I'm doing it. So that it's overlapping <laughs> that darker black line that you can see. If you have a tough time looking at it, you can kind of hold it up to the light from the paper side and see that the fabric is going all the way around that solid black line from the center. Okay. Great. Let's grab one of our corner pieces. And the now- four or the six? So when we look at the paper piece template, you will usually see in the paper piece template, it'll have numbers. And that's basically the order in which you want to add your pieces and sew them on. So the first one we did was A1 in mm -hmm. this case. Now we're going to look at A2. And if you look, you can see that two of the corners are smaller than the opposite, the other two. Okay. So the bigger ones are going to be for the bigger ones. And the smaller squares that, or rectangles that we cut out will be for the smaller corners. All right. So let's grab a small one for the A2. And now you're looking at the fabric. If you were to piece these two together, how would you lay them together? Forget that the paper is there. I, I would put it this way. You got way. it. And so that's exactly how you're going to do it. But, but we're not at the line. You're Does not, that matter? Nope, it doesn't because we can trim it down later. I've designed th these pieces to be cut out so you can trim after. Okay. In some paper piece projects, I trim before. But for beginners, this is an easier way, I think. All right. So you hold it there. So notice, Jenny's placed pretty side of the fabric to pretty side, just like you would piece them together. And now just hold them. Flip it, and you're going to stitch on the line that's between the A1 block in the center and that A2 corner. All right, here I go. 
So now some things to do to set up your sewing machine so it stitches a little bit easier and so that the paper comes off quicker. Go ahead and shorten your stitch length. Okay. That'll help perforate the paper a little bit more and it'll make for really easy uh, pulling off of the paper after. And I stitch right on that go line? Keep going right off. Oh, right off. You can go into the seam allowance and off. Nope. Really? Yep. <laughs> danger, danger. <laughs> no. It... Okay, I right. went right off. Perfect. So there it is, the stitch line looks great. And now we open this up and I just finger press it with my fingers this way. Mm -hmm. That one's done. Now let's look at A3. A3 is a big one. Okay. So let's go with A3. Again, you're looking at it from the fabric side, just like you would piece it. Oh, All not right. too hard, huh? <laughs> and you just stitch on the line. So this is a really easy way to get perfect piecing, really like exact corners, precision piecing basically, just by following lines on a piece of paper. So you don't have to worry about quarter inch seam allowances, you just stitch right on the solid line of the paper template. Now can you, you can you can iron this back if you, you want can. to. You can, I do sometimes. So and do so, you worry about these big seams? In so here? yeah, so this is what I was saying about before, like after, about trimming it down after. Okay. So here we have, she's sewing, um, Jenny called out this really big seam allowance. So this is what you can do. You flip it to the side of the paper. We pull it back, and it's okay if you rip the paper because you stitched off, you know, it's no big deal. We pull it back right to the stitch line. Okay. And so that's our seam. So whatever seam allowance you want to keep after that, excuse me, and we'll just measure a quarter inch down from that line. And do you do this, you do this as you go along? As you go along, mm -hmm. okay. and you chop it off. So there's our quarter inch seam allowance, and there it is. All right. And so if you want to, if you want to use the iron, you can. Yeah, you can you, press it if you want just to. Just as easy. For a little block like this, sometimes if you go ahead and cut all the squares up into your pieces, just take it and go, you know, you can do it real quickly right at the right, sewing I'm, machine. I'm four is on this side. Look at you. You're a paper piecing <laughs> pro. <laughs> well, well, I wouldn't say that. But <laughs> if you can do that, those steps of laying the fabrics correctly, pretty sides touching, stitching right on, that's all you have to do over and over again. It's just so backward to my brain because you're like sewing up, not on the fabric. Exactly. You don't know where your seam allowance really is mm -hmm. because you're, uh, it's just, it's just backwards to my brain. <laughs> That's why I try to do it. Like once you see the fabric facing up, lay the other piece just like you would normally piece. Forget that the paper see, is See, that underneath. actually makes sense for me as you would normally piece. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, wait, do I want to trim that one off? Um, the the oh. shorter ones are closer to the corner. They are seam close. Yeah, the bigger yeah. ones, because the angle is longer, the piece has to be larger. So that's why we end up with a larger seam allowance. All right. Well, this is, this is, this is pretty interesting. Now, do you back stitch or anything? No, you don't have to. If your stitch length is pretty small and pretty tight, you don't really have to. Okay. There we go. You can if you want to. Well, I just did right there because I thought it would take me closer to the line. Okay. You know, I was a little... So you want to right. trim that one down, so flip it to the paper side up. Paper uh -huh. side up. There you go. Pull it back. That's your seam, and then just add whatever seam allowance you want. Okay. That's right, because you're left-handed. That's right. Go for it. I'm a lefty. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So there's your block. Looks crazy. Now <laughs> let's just trim it down to the right size. So All flip right. it back over. And so I lay my ruler on the outer line, because remember, that's our seam allowance. We don't want to cut on the inner black line, because that's the finished block. Okay? All right. So this, this lighter right outer there. line. You got it. And chop all the way around all four sides. All right. And what is this runner called again? It's the Twist 10 Table Runner. It's twist a little ten. Twist 10 it's block. A, yeah. It's a cute name. Mm -hmm. And remember that I'll include the template for you to download it in the description box below. There's a link and you can just print out as many as you need. That's so nice. And, and uh, you can get, where can you get this newsprint kind of paper? You can, um, I buy it online really, but you can contact maybe some different art stores, places where they sell different yeah. variety types of paper. Awesome. All right. All right. So there's our block. And so let's grab a few more that we have here. Okay. We can then line them up and you can make this smaller, longer, shorter, whatever you want. Notice these all have the same background and I kind of like the look of this. Yeah. The one that I made here, I tried to use all the different navy blues all right, in let's, it. Let me show this one real fast so you can see this one. <laughs> this is, it's actually really fun. It's yeah. cute and she's got some different details on here and we're just going to show you every part of it. Yeah. 
So these are the blocks. Once you do one block fine, just like you did, Jenny, mm -hmm. just repeat it. Make as many as you want. You can make this a little bed runner, make it sure. smaller for a little tabletop or whatever you want to do. So in this case, we did six of them. So let's put this aside. Now, when, when do we take the paper off? Now, you can take it off now. If you're not going to be working on the project right after, just leave the paper on until right before you're ready to piece. I just wanted to see how easy it was to tear. Oh, it actually is super, super easy. easy. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes I'll just take a pin and score the inside one if I can't really get a, a grip of it just to break down the paper. And that's it. This, this is great. Uh, Therapy, therapy tearing. <laughs> you can sit right at, <laughs> just sit at the TV and just rip them all off. Yeah. And one thing I like to do actually is after I take the paper off, before I get ready to piece everything together, is to hit it with some spray starch. Because if you notice, all the angles on the outside here are all on the bias. So, you know, you don't want to be tugging on this too hard to distort awesome. it. So if you hit it with some spray starch, it'll help set the piece in place and makes it easier for piecing it together. Great. That is very cool. Awesome. So once we have our six blocks of those, then let's go move on to the other components of the little table runner. Here you can see that we just have two solid squares. Let's hold it up again. Uh, two solid strips, excuse me. And these two were in the two and a half inch strip pack for the same uh, fabric collection that I used. So just two of these. And I designed it so that six blocks across is going to be just enough for you to use one full strip across with minimal trimming on the ends. So that's real simple. There's nothing involved so, with that. So if you put one, two, three, four, five, six blocks, it's just one two and a half inch strip. That's right. Okay, One perfect. here, one here. So awesome. the only other part to complete the top of the table runner is this piece here. All and the so pieces. these, yeah, these yeah. are just, they finish at two inches square. And all we did was take our two and a half inch strips right here. I'll show you one that's almost done. And we'll get you to add one and to it. Just cut them into little squares. Where are my little square pieces? Do your little quarter of an inch seam. They fell off. Oh, here they are. Great. So here we have, I just took the two and a half inch strip and just cut random pieces. I'll cut two, four of each one. When I have a little stack together, I kind of just lay them out in whatever random order I want. So let's see, pick one out maybe that you want to add to that I'll end. just add this green Great. one. So we're just going to lay these quarter right sides seam, together. Right sides together, quarter inch seam allowance, and just make a long strip made up of the little squares. All right, or like you say, pretty sides Pretty together. sides touching. <laughs> pretty sides touching. All right. I say that because I find that it helps my students sometimes the right sides, instead of the right as in right as in correct, people think right as in directional right, so it just makes sense for them. They well, and I'm, I'm all pretty. about the mantra, you know, because yeah. I get lost in things, and so I'll be like, you know, I have to say the same the thing. The same each thing time. over, so pretty. This side from this side, this side pretty. You know, I always say the same words yeah. so that I it helps me stay where I am. Great. So there you go. Then we have that strip, and all we have to do is put this to a solid strip, mm -hmm. add that to the strip of your pieced blocks together, and then one more strip at the bottom. And what line is this that you used? This is Color Theory. It's oh, by V and Co. From yeah. Oda. Very nice. Very nice. Another really sweet Vanessa. Oh. <laughs> Vanessa's rock, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. Great, so once you have that top together, then you just quilt it as you normally would. Feel free to, I actually really enjoyed making a scrappy binding mm -hmm. for this project because of the strips that come in the pack. She has some really cool ombres right here. And then for the back, and you can use just a solid fabric. Let's hold this up, just okay. a solid. Or I went ahead and just made a pieced backing as well and cut up some of the 10 inch squares. I cut up one of the strips and just make whatever you want. You know. I also wanted to point out, um, I, I'm not sure if you can see this real well, but she has used variegated thread, yeah. which is really fun. You know, a lot of times we'll have that spool. We're not sure what to what do with to it. Do this with is it. a great project because it's got all these different colors in it. And, and it I, still pops. That's why I chose yeah. the gray and ones for the two strips. Yeah, and then trying really to bring good. out the colors that are here with the variegated thread. Absolutely. Okay, so just to just to recap, we're going to make our blocks. We're going to have six of those. That's right. We're going to put a, a solid two and a half inch strip on the top. Mm -hmm. I mean, not solid color, but yeah, a but whole a strip. strip. And then a, a whole strip on the bottom. And then finish with these little two and with a half. a strip that we made pieced from the right, two and a half. Which thing. just adds its real yeah. pop, some real zing. So that is actually very cute, very quick project, went Definitely. together very yeah. fast. Yeah. And it's something that you can quilt on your domestic sewing machine. No long arm quilter involved, you can hand quilt it, do whatever you want. And all I did for the quilting on this one is straight stitching. Yeah. So there's no need for free motion or anything, keep it real basic and simple and let well, the fabric do the work really. And for anybody who's, who wants to try paper piecing, mm -hmm. this is really a, a, great, a great way to start. I think so. You great. know, because it gets you a little, a little familiar with it. And paper piecing is one of those things that, that you really do get perfect Absolutely. points on everything. Precision and um, accuracy. Because you're really, you're following lines. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> which, is, which is very helpful. <laughs> 
Great. So thank you so much, oh, Jenny. You're so I'm welcome. glad I you love joined it. me and helped me make my little twist and table runner. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, hit it with that thumbs up below. Share it across the different social media sites and make sure that you check out Jenny's channel over at the Missouri Start Quilt Company. I'll include a link for it in the description box below. Subscribe to her channel as well if you don't. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.